Which FDA standards apply to me? Where do I find FDA standards? How do I prove I'm following a standard? Can I follow outdated FDA standards? And why might I think I want to follow an outdated standard? We'll answer these and more on this segment of MedTech Crossroads. Guidance documents are different from standards, and you can find out more about guidance documents in this other segment of MedTech Crossroads. FDA guidance documents and FDA recognized standards are not the same thing. FDA doesn't issue standards, but they do issue guidance documents. They simply recognize standards that industry has put forward. Third party organizations put out standards that are often put together by representatives of major companies. Now, just because a standard exists doesn't mean that FDA has actually recognized it. There are many standards out there that may be good and useful, but FDA has not given their stamp on them and put them in the consensus standards database. There have also been many times when the FDA has recognized a particular version of a standard, but not the very next version of that. 14971 comes to mind where the 2007 version was in use for many, many years. The 2012 version was not recognized, and now the 2019 version has been recognized by US FDA. Which FDA standards apply to me and to my product? Well, when you're finding your product code for your product, which you'd be doing while you're determining the regulatory classification and regulatory pathway for your product, you might find that at the bottom of the FDA page for a particular product code, certain standards are listed. So for example, in recent years, TENS units or transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulators have been cleared by FDA for everything from congestion to pain relief. Here's an example from the FDA website of a product code for a TENS unit for pain relief. And when you look at this page, beyond the information on the product code, device classification, and submission type, you'll notice that there's a recognized consensus standard listed. 17-14 from AMI, ANSI, NS4, 2013 with revision in 2017. And if you look at that commercially available standard, you'll find out that it's all about requirements for portable, battery-powered, transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulators that are used in the treatment of pain syndromes. So if you're gonna submit a 510K using this product code for your product, you better be sure to include work on this standard in your 510K submission. FDA has gone to the trouble to list it on the product code page and you wanna pay particular attention to it. Now keep in mind that this only applies if you've chosen the correct product classification for your device. For example, an over-the-counter TENS unit, FDA actually does not list this particular standard. Does that mean you wouldn't want to use it? Well, not necessarily. When FDA lists a standard on a classification page, it's right in your face. But there are many standards that may still apply to you or even be useful to you in the development of your device. And if they're FDA consensed, it's likely going to make your life easier to find them and use them. So what if your product code doesn't have any standards listed? Does this mean you can just forget about standards? No, whether or not specific standards are listed or not, you still need to be the master of the requirements for your product. This really starts in the design control process. You can learn more about that process in these other MedTech Crossroads videos. But still, if there are other FDA consensed standards out there and FDA doesn't list them on the classification page, how can you be expected to find them and comply with them? And this brings us to our second question. Where do I find FDA consents standards? Enter the FDA consensus standards database. Like you might expect, it's a large and clunky database that's kind of hard to use and hard to find things in. In fact, at Into Being, we found one FDA database so hard to process that we actually built our own tool around it. PathSurveyor.com is a free interface to the FDA 510K database. But I digress, no such interface exists for the consensus standards database. There's a link to this database in the description 
And you can and probably should brute force search this database for keywords that seem to be related to your product. But even this approach can miss some important standards that you may wanna follow. This is why it's important to have someone alongside of you who's familiar with FDA standards and can point you at least to some of the more common ones and help you ask intelligent questions about some of the more obscure ones. Some of the more common standards out there that we've talked about on the show before include 60601, 14971, 62304, and 10993, covering topics like electrical safety, risk analysis, software lifecycle, and biocompatibility. So if there's nothing listed on the product code page, search the database and talk to someone knowledgeable in complying with FDA consensed standards. But there's one more important way that we don't want to omit. You can talk to the FDA. In an FDA pre-sub, oftentimes they will recommend standards that you should really consider complying with. You can also ask specific questions about standards you have questions about. Following a standard is no guarantee of FDA clearance, but not following a standard that FDA was really expecting you to follow is sure gonna to lead to a lot of questions and probably make you wish you had just identified it and complied with it from the get-go. And this brings us to question three, how do I prove that I'm following an FDA recognized standard? The simple answer is objective evidence. Objective evidence is just evidence that the FDA can review, written documentation. For example, if the standard you're trying to comply with is common and there are certified test labs, that can certify your product as conforming to the standard, that's exactly what you're gonna do. 60601 for patient contacting electrical systems is a great example of this. The test lab will ask for your device, your labeling, other documentation, including your risk assessment, and will review and test to the standard. If you pass, you'll get a nice shiny document that you can present to FDA. But other times there won't be a neat and tidy way that you can simply test the standard. You're gonna to have to roll up your sleeves, get into the standard, generate the objective evidence necessary, and provide it to FDA as a part of your submission. And this brings us to our fourth question. Can I follow outdated FDA standards? Why would you want to? Well, it turns out that this kind of thing comes up more often than you would think. I remember one time we at Into Being were developing a product for our client and we eventually got 510K clearance for it. But right in the middle of everything, the ground changed under our feet. A document was issued that affected our development process. Now it would have been easiest for us to just keep going on the development path we were on, but it turns out that wasn't the right answer. We paused, we digested that document, those changes, and then continued on to clearance. Keep in mind that for most standards, the FDA consensus process lags a little bit. You can generally see it coming. There's a grace period usually where complying to an old version of a standard is still acceptable. But it's important to review which standards are currently acceptable to FDA. Just because you and even your developers have worked under a previous version of a standard, it may be time to pause and learn the new one. Just because somebody has experience under an old version doesn't mean they know all the current nuances. So it's important to review what the currently acceptable FDA standards are so that you're not caught by surprise. In conclusion, standards compliance is a really important part of the development process for medical devices. It's important to work with somebody who understands FDA consensus standards and is able to guide you as you work on complying with them. If this is something you'd like more information about, we welcome your comments and questions. Thanks for watching today. Be sure to subscribe for more content like this.